السلام عليكم in this video we'll learn how to install EFK suite into Kubernetes cluster to get the application logs EFK stands for Elasticsearch, FluentD and Kibana which are the three components that works together to get the logs and visualize those logs in a nice dashboard in one of my previous videos posted on YouTube I have already explained how those three components works together so mainly here we'll find that FluentD, which is the first component that should be installed, should be installed in each one of the nodes in my cluster so that it can um, query or it can collect the logs in each node. Then it will send those logs into Elasticsearch. In its turn, Elasticsearch will get those logs and it will save them local in its uh, database. Then Kibana, the third uh, component, will go to query Elasticsearch to get certain logs then to visualize them into a nice uh, dashboard where we can see all uh, the logs and we can filter on the logs coming from certain pod or certain uh, nodes for example so that was the theory uh, part now let's move to the practical uh, part where here we'll go to install efk stack using helm charts so let's get started so to do that here I have already created a github repository where I put the different commands that we'll be using along with the configuration yaml files. So you can go to uh, clone this uh, repo in your, um, in your local machine. I have already done so and here um, I have cloned it and I opened that repo using uh, VS Code. So to start with here I start by installing Elasticsearch. For that, I'll be using Helm charts, which are the, let's say, the easiest option to install applications into Kubernetes. So on the Helm charts repository here, we can if you go to charts slash stable, we can find multiple available Helm charts that we can use in order to deploy applications into Kubernetes. And one of them is, of course, Elasticsearch. So if I search for Elasticsearch, I'll find here five ones, for actually. And here I'll choose this one, Elasticsearch. Note here there is some other ones for installing curator, exporters, and uh, so on. I'll just go to pick Elasticsearch. So I'll open this in a new window. And from here, I'll find more details about how to use that uh, chart. So simply here, I go to install that chart without overriding any of its uh, default configuration, which is described in this table here. So I'll take the first command line, which is also available on my GitHub repo, Helm install Elasticsearch. And then from the command line, I'm already connected to my Kubernetes cluster. So if I run kubectl, get nodes to get the different nodes in my cluster here i'll get four nodes in my uh, cluster now if i run kubectl get pods on the default namespace i don't have any pod installed yet so let's start by installing elasticsearch using the helm command line helm cli so helm install elasticsearch stable elasticsearch and so on uh, here, just a, no a quick note, Helm, it's a CLI tool, you need to install it on your uh, machine. If you go to helm.sh, you will find the uh, instructions on how to install it. Hit enter. So this now will start up sending the template for Elasticsearch. That's what it tell tells me here. The template was sent to um, Kubernetes and then Kubernetes will uh, create the different resources described in that template those resources are different uh, uh, pods the services the persistent volumes and so on so here if i go to run kubectl get pods we can see that now we start seeing some pods started uh, creating if we run that again probably we will be able to see a new uh, pods coming along the way so let's give it something 
between 6 to 10 seconds uh, or 6 to 10 minutes actually to compute provisioning those resources and let's come back later to see uh, the uh, provisioned uh, resources and now yes we have our all our pods running inside the cluster so here we have actually uh, let's say seven pods running so two will act like the client component inside Elasticsearch and two will act like the data who will connect to the database and then three will connect as the master nodes we can uh, view this uh, information also on the kubernetes dashboard so here if i go to the overview refresh and here i'll be able to see the different created uh, resources great so in addition to the pods the Elasticsearch Helm chart did also created some services so here if I run kubectl get services we'll get three services running one is for Kubernetes actually and two created with the Elasticsearch Helm chart uh, the important one is this one actually Elasticsearch dash client this service will be used by FluentD in order to send the logs okay so we'll need this uh, service name later and uh, both in FluentD and also in Kibana because Kibana when it will query Elasticsearch it will connect through this service name cool now we are ready to install FluentD so let's go do that So to install FluentD, we can use either Helm charts, and there is a Helm chart for FluentD. So if you go to the uh, stable, um, if you go to the uh, stable Helm charts, you will find one for FluentD. But this t tends to be um, uh, uh, to be not uh, maintained anymore. So uh, I have looked for another way, which is to go. To directly through the FluentD um, uh, repository in GitHub and the development team they provide actually a FluentD daemon set elastic search which is a daemon set to install um, FluentD in Kubernetes so I have taken this file without changing anything and I have included it in my GitHub uh, repository that's the FluentD daemon set elastic search so here you can specify namespace, I have commented that it will be called FluentD by default. And then here we need actually to make sure that the FluentD Elasticsearch host, which is an environment variable, this, this is what will tell FluentD where to send the logs in which Elasticsearch instance. So the value here should be the same name as the Elasticsearch service name, the one that we have seen here okay the other configurations is the for number by default 9 to uh, 9200 for uh, Elasticsearch the, uh, using HTTP and some other configuration if you enable authentication on uh, uh, Elasticsearch so you can use login passwords and so on let's now go to deploy FluentD so to do that I'll use now not Helm but I'll use kubectl create dash f and then I'll pass the file which is in my case fluentd daemon set elasticsearch that file was sent to kubernetes now kubernetes will run the configuration inside that file and it will understand this is a daemon set so it need to install a fluentd pod in each of the available nodes I have in my cluster I have four nodes so this means I'll have four instances of uh, fluentd pods running in my cluster so now if i run the command kubectl get uh, pods from here i'll be able to see that exactly now i have four instances of fluentd pods running cool so now we have installed elasticsearch and fluentd the third part is to install kibana which is which will provide the dashboard to view those different uh, logs so let's do that in Kibana 
here we'll be using Helm charts. So there is a specific Helm chart for uh, installing Kibana in Kubernetes. So I'll use that uh, Helm chart. And you notice that here for each Helm chart, actually there is some default values that uh, will be available with the Helm chart. And we can also override some other uh, values. So all the values we can override are available on this uh, uh, table here. We can override those values either through using the uh, CLI, the Helm CLI command, or we can put those different variables inside a YAML configuration file. And that's the option I have chosen here. So I have this file called kibana-values.yaml. And here I'm overriding actually uh, two values, kibana.yaml and service. I have taken this file from the uh, values.yaml inside the Helm chart for Kibana. This file is the one that contains the, the default values for a Kibana uh, Helm chart. So we see here, for example, the image repository, the tag used for that image, and so on. Here, uh, I have overrided, I want to override this files, kibana.yaml file. Why? This is actually because this contains the service name for Elasticsearch. So as we said, Kibana should know about the service name for Elasticsearch so that it can uh, query to get the different logs. And here, uh, the default value provided here is not the right value I'm using in my cluster. In my cluster, I have Elasticsearch-client. So that's what I have done here. I have taken that same section and then I have provided the right Elasticsearch-client name. Remember, that was the um, what we have seen in the uh, services. Let me run that command again. kubectl get services and yes, this should be it. I'm also overriding another configuration, which is the service type. The service type, by default, it uses cluster IP. This will give um, a private IP address, which is not accessible from the outside. And here, for demoing purposes, I want to use a load balancer. This will give me a public IP address so that I can access the dashboard from outside the cluster. Otherwise, we can use port forward, for example, to get a private connection from my machine into the Kibana pod inside Kubernetes. So now let's deploy uh, Kibana using Helm chart and override the chart using this kibana-values YAML file. I'll take this command line. And use this one. So I'm using dash F to override using a file. Let's run this command. And now Helm will connect to a Kubernetes cluster, deploy the chart, and then start provisioning the Kibana uh, pod and also the service. So now if I go to run kubectl get pods, we'll be able to see that there is a new pod that was added. That's the pod for Kibana. Now to access the uh, Kibana dashboard, I'll go to run the command kubectl get services to get the different uh, services and endpoints created right here. So I have one service called Kibana, which uses a load balancer and it have a cluster IP address, but it have also an external IP. So I'll copy this IP along with the port number. Don't forget to do that, 443. And I'll open the dashboard in a new window. So let's go to with the port number 443. And this will launch Kibana dashboard in my machine. Great, here to start uh, configuring Kibana to get the logs from my cluster, I select Explore on my own. And here I'll go to Discover. And then I need to create an index. Let's say here I'll pick the, uh, not that, but the star. Next steps. And then for creating time field here, let's say I don't want to create time filter. And then we go to create the index. So on selecting the star, this means it will uh, get all the logs available of, uh, in uh, uh, Elasticsearch. Now, if I go to 
discover menu from here it's searching and now we get lots of logs those are the logs coming from my kubernetes cluster so now i can view those logs and you see uh, uh, fluent did it added lots of information metadata around those logs metadata about the uh, log content the docker container id the namespace the container name the pod name and the container image pod id and so on those are important information that we can use in order to debug the application great so those are the logs coming from the cluster itself the different pods and ins installed uh, inside the cluster because in kubernetes we know there is lots of default pods that are installed by default i mean but now we want to get logs from our own applications for now i don't have any application installed yet so to simulate that i have an application that produces logs i'll use a pod that does only produce logs for that i have added an another file called counter.yaml this will create a pod in kubernetes it's called counter it will use the busybox container or image and, and it will run this command this command while true it will produce uh, in a loop it will produce uh, logs with the text this is demo log with the number of the log and the current date so let's deploy this application that will produce logs inside the uh, container to do that i'll use the command line so kubectl create dash f and then the name of that file counter.yaml once that pod is created actually we know that in using kubectl we can get get the logs from this pod itself so if i run here let's first run kubectl get pods we'll see yes the pod was deployed successfully so now i can get uh, logs from that uh, uh, pod so if i run kubectl kubectl logs then the name of the pod counter you see here the logs produced by that pod they are displayed right here this is demo log and so on now we want to get those logs displayed in kibana dashboard so by default now kibana actually should be aware that uh, there is those um, actually fluentd should be aware that there is those new logs so it will collect them and send them into elasticsearch then kibana will uh, uh, query those different logs so let's go to refresh the user interface here and now we should be able to see some of these logs so we see logs coming from different uh, namespaces and different uh, pod containers fluentd fluentd lots of uh, logs coming from fluentd so now i can actually go to a filter on the logs coming only from my counter pod from my application so for that i'll use kubernetes pod name kubernetes pod name i'll use that here and then my pod is called counter so i'll filter on that and here yes we see all the logs coming from my counter pod cool so here we have the messages this is uh, demo log coming from here and this is demo log and the uh, names uh, the current date and so on and the uh, node that hosts my uh, pod we can also get more details if we expand one log to see the other uh, metadata around my uh, logs great so this was that easy how to install efk into kubernetes to get our application logs and filter those uh, logs in using kibana i hope this was helpful for you so thank you and wait for me for next videos